Hi, I'm James Kendrick from JK on the Run. See? It's official. You know, there are few things in life as we witnessed when Kevin Tofel did his marvelous unboxing video when he received his Samsung Q1 UNPC. Few things that can bring excitement to the heart of a true geek than having the FedEx man show up with a box from Dynamism. Dynamism is without a doubt the people that had the single most fun mobile gadgets on the planet. And today, I just received, literally minutes ago, from the FedEx guy, this box containing the brand spanking new Japanese version Sony UX50 micro PC. So let's open it up. See, I'm using a real box cutter and a scissors like, like Kevin. Shh, I'm recording. That was for the gallery who's watching in, in the background. Yeah. You know, I need to do something. Hang on just a minute. I need to pause the sucker. No, nope, can't pause when it's recording. Oh well. See, our audience in the background is anxiously awaiting the delivery of his Guitar Hero 2 video game that he ordered for his birthday. And it spent the last three days anxiously waiting for the UPS guy to show up. And it hasn't happened. And needless to say, he's a little upset about that. So the box is open. Let's see what we have in here. We have a little dynamism. Transmill. We'll put that over there. We have lots. You know what? Let me fix the. Let me adjust the camera. A minute. Hang on. Let's fix this. There we go. I figured you don't want to look at me anyway. This is the goodie you've come to see. Lots of peanut packing for safety. I always save these. They don't taste very good though, but they're nice and crunchy. And let's see if we can get this out of here. It's nice and tightly packed. Whoa, it's very light and small, this whole box. And as you can see, that's it. Everything is in this one box. So let me put the peanuts back in so you environmentalists will know. Well, you're probably already upset because there's peanuts, right? This is the box. The Sony Val Personal Computer. That's all it says on the front. Actually, that's on the side. This is the top of the box. Intel inside. Little Japanese stuff. We have the official Japanese. Now, should mention that the UX50, actually none of the UX series, is available yet in the United States. So the only way you can get it is the two Japanese versions, the UX50 or the UX90S, are available in Japan. And Dynamism, of course, imports them from Japan and then puts the uh, uh, English operating system on it. There's the other side of the box sliding keyboard and so right now the only way you can get one of these is through an importer I recommend Dynamism so we are opening the box now what do we see a CD in Japanese for distribution with a new Sony PC only 
let's put this here, right next to the box cutter. And should we go for the big box or the little box first? The Japanese owner's manual. I don't speak Japanese. You speak Japanese back there? Nope. Okay, the audience doesn't speak Japanese either. And no, no UPS guy yet either. But he's anxiously waiting, aren't you? Yes. Yeah, he wants it. You want to stick your head in the camera so they can see who I'm talking to? He'll pass. He'll pass. Okay. First little pink envelope pouch. That's the money shot right there. Doesn't have the battery yet. I'm sure that's separate, but wow, this thing is small. I'm going to show you how small it is in a minute compared to the Sony U71, the predecessor. Cool, and we'll go over all of the ports and everything on it in just a moment. Oh, but we had to do that, didn't we? We couldn't wait to do that. There's the keyboard and the sliding screen. Awesome. All right, I'm going to set this aside for a moment. We'll get up the good stuff like the battery. So let's unpack the rest. Feels like a carrying case right here. Oh yeah, nice little carrying case. It's one complaint people often had about the Sony U50 and 70 was the pouch was kind of big and, and uh, ugly. This one actually is bad. It's got a flap, a little mesh compartment there. Closes with Velcro, belt loop for every geek so they can hang it on their belt. I'm getting laughs over there in the audience. They think they think it geek being geeks are not cool. Isn't that right? Yeah. Peanut gallery. Alright, let's open this box up. Let's see what we got in here. I'm guessing it's a dock. But I could be wrong. Oh no, wouldn't be wrong. Ah yeah, that's the back, just like the Sony U series. This is the dock. We see the dock. Woo, we got stuff flying everywhere. This is the dock. This would be the front of the dock. Where you've got oh you've got power indicator light. You've got oh yeah, now this is interesting. We'll talk about this in a minute. Um, audio video out. That's cool. RCA jack, USB one, and then two more USBs on the back. Monitor, Firewire, and of course Ethernet and the power jack. Pretty cool. This is very similar to the Sony U jack or port replicator. Now this is what's different here. This pops out. This, this I believe, takes a Felica card that is used in Japan, sort of as a smart card, I believe, where you can actually use it to pay for stuff online and, and things. So that's not going to be much uh, import to to us here in the United, or me here in the United States, I should say. So this is the dock, and this obviously fits like so. Very easy to snap the back on and then it just sits right on top of that. Cool. So we will look at that later. Now let's see what else we got in here. We got all this fun toys. Boxes. Hey, at least my shipment came today. <laughs> he didn't think that was too funny. Yours is coming. Tracking says it's on the way. 
Does it show it's on the truck, out for delivery? Oh. So in the accessories box, we've got the little wrist strap. But I, I just don't see the wrist thing happening, so very small AC adapter. Let's take this out of this little protected pouch here. One thing Sony does very nicely is very small AC adapters. Very awesome. Nice Velcro strap to cinch it all back up when you're on the move. Then we've got the other half of the equation here. Cool. So we have, put that back over there, and I am going to pause this. Okay. Further into the accessories drawer, we have two extra little nubbins for the joystick, which we'll look at in a minute, and the battery. All right, the battery is very small. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so we can see this stuff. Everything on this device is so tiny that you have to really get in and look at it. Nice small stuff. Then we'll open it up. Like so, this is the little standard battery. The model number is VGP BPS6, like anybody cares. <laughs> and here we go. And of course, like a true geek, never looking at the manual, just figuring out how to slide the battery in. And there it is. Battery is attached to the unit, like so. Cool. We've got one USB port on the side of the U50. This is the dreaded memory stick slot right there, of course. This is a capture button, so that must be for the camera, because remember there's two cameras built into this thing, which is pretty, pretty cool. I'm just looking at it. Here's the stylus. And it's little housing back here. Whoops, off the camera. Here's the stylus. Oh man, I can already tell you this is too small. It's very small and thin. So we'll put that right back in here. That's where that's going to stay. I will use my multi pin tip stylus that I've been using for years for touch screens. It works just like a pen. It actually's got three points, pen and a mechanical pencil. I don't remember the brand, don't know where I got it, but it's been a great purchase for me. All right, so this is the Sony U50, UX50, sorry, micro PC, VAL product line. We're going to try to fire it up in just a minute, and we're going to get ready for that. So here we are. Two more accessories I found in the box. Last things in the box. We have a phone call. <laughs> back in a minute. We're back again. The real world intrudes on the them always. So this I wrote about this on the blog. This is a cool thing for transporting the AC adapter and the cable and the VGA cord. You put the adapter in here. In fact, we'll just kind of see how this works. We'll put this in like so. Oh, it's tight fit. Then you have your cord, which is all velcroed up nicely, and you put it in this side. And you snap it over when you get it the right size that you want. And it looks like it's hard to snap. And look at that. 
And the other last accessory in the box, which I can get rid of now, is the external VGA monitor port. It's got a 100-bit Ethernet port. And look at this, it actually has an RCA jack on the side for video out. That's, that's really handy. And this fits in the dock connector on the, on the UX. And this somehow fits in here for transport. Somehow it fits in here. Believe me, it does. I saw it on a website, so it must be true. There we go. So this makes a nice little adapter packet that you just throw in your gadget bag or your man purse, whatever you call it. And off you go. So we'll pull this out now because we're going to need this for the rest of the video. And I'm just going to leave this all nice and attached. Cool. So let's look at the dock for a moment. One more time, up close and personal. And this is how the UX slides in. Except I think I got this backwards because Sony is backwards. Read the manual. Well, I can't. The manual is in Japanese. No, I'm just kidding. All right, we got this fixed like it should have been to begin with. And we take the UX50. It's guided right in by grooves and it's docked. So you leave that on your desktop plugged in with all of your peripherals plugged in and you've got an instant with an external monitor, instant desktop computer just by dropping it in here. It's pretty cool, isn't it? What about your battery? Did you put it in yet? Yeah, the battery's already in. It's the audience wants to know if the battery is connected yet. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to try to fire this puppy up. Let me make a quick change. All right, now we can get in close. We're going to try and turn this on. I have no idea if the battery has been charged. I suspect it has because dynamism anglicized the operating system. So there we go with boot time. We've seen some videos about the boot time already. I'm not going to get into that with this one. I promise you, I will not do that. Standard Windows XP looks pretty small, that high resolution, doesn't it? Still booting up. Now the front of the device, while it's booting up, we can cover that. We've got mouse click, left and right buttons. We've got, I'm not sure what that is. I think that's a middle click, but we'll see. This, I believe, fires up the Sony launcher which is kind of like the UMPC touch pack on the uh, Microsoft UMPC devices. We have, this is the little joystick nubbin thing, which looks pretty cool actually. The zoom up and down buttons, as you can see there. The power button and the hold. If you slide it down, it holds so none of the buttons will, will be triggered. Now on the bottom here, we've got some really cool LEDs for battery life, and it's showing its own battery, I hope, and not that it's low battery, because I don't know at this point. we got the hard disk activity light, Bluetooth is active, and WLAN. Cool. Buttons there. On the bottom, this is the dock connector, the AC jack, and headphone and microphone, and I'm glad to see that microphone. And there's actually a speaker here and a microphone here. So this actually could be used like this as a Skype phone. No way. Whoa! No yes, way. way. <laughs> so it's still preparing to start for the first time. So we all know how Windows XP is starting the first time. So we're going to keep going with our little tour on this side of the device. I showed you these. This is the uh, wireless, the Wi-Fi on and off, so you can actually turn it off, which is a nice touch. Let's see, we looked at the top, we looked at the bottom. You know, one thing that I don't see in anywhere that we did see in uh, 
the manual anyway is a little stand that supposedly slides on the back here. So I'm not so sure what the deal is with that. I hope there is a stand included. I have to go back through everything maybe. But I sure didn't see it unless it's in with the uh, perhaps it's in with the nope. Man. Whoa, did you hear that? Yeah. Welcome to Microsoft Windows. Oh, it's the first time. I can explain things as you move along. To continue, click next. And we just did that. See with my handy dandy good stylus. I'm just going to select my system settings, United States, English. I use this type of keyboard, Japanese. I don't think so. Where can you get those? You know, that may have to work though. I'm just trying to set it. Looks like the calibration is off a bit since it's never been calibrated. So, there's a bug on me. There's a bug on the screen. Everyone always says Windows has lots of bugs. <laughs> I'm just trying to. You know what? Let's try to test the buttons out. Cool. It goes fast. Oh, it goes extra fast. The longer you hold it down, the faster it key repeats. That's awesome. That is the right. Uh oh. I hit check programmers language. I don't think so. You know, there is no English unless there's US English for the keyboard. Or it may just be a factor that it is a. Oh no, here we go. United States Dvorak. United States International. And just US. I'm going to select US and just see what I get here. Just trying to get a little familiar with the, uh, and I may change that later because remember this is a Japanese keyboard that has been done. So we select the system settings. Everything is very legible. I can see this very clearly. I know you're going to have a hard time because it's a small screen, mm -hmm. but. Uh, yeah, it really is very legible. Zoom in. Yes, everyone's a critic. <laughs> Just zoom in. There we go. Next. Oh, is this a genuine copy of Microsoft Windows? Well, <laughs> gee, I hope so. And there should be a certificate of authenticity. And we have it here. I found it. So what I'm going to do, for the first time ever, no. on live TV, is type in the product key using the keyboard. As you can see, the keyboard is lit, backlit. That's pretty cool, actually. It's cool. Little blue lights. So let me try to get this guy running. Is it Japanese letters? No, it's actually in English and Japanese. That's good. Actually, this keyboard is pure English. Oh. Those dynamism folks are really nice. They've actually got an English keyboard on this thing. Whoa, that's awesome. I'm having to key in my thing. There's not a lot of tactical tactile feedback so I could see that you could take a little bit of time getting used to this but I should to be fair point out I am not a fan of thumb boards anyway in fact I pretty use much your, detest them actually. use your own keyboard ah oh, but we will have to do that later we can't give away all of the secrets right up front <laughs> you <laughs> You know, if you're going to talk, you should just come right here and, and join the, get on the screen. I have nothing to talk about. 
You have nothing to talk about? Uh-uh. Okay. I'm going to turn on Windows Automatic Updates. This could be a mistake since we're trying to do video podcasts. This is actually very responsive. The screen is extremely legible. Let me tell you. In fact, I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can try, so I can try to demonstrate how clear the screen is, at least for me. Could be a lighting issue, though. All right. We have to do a computer description. We're going to call this... I'm going to make... Whoa, this is awesome. See, I told you Michael's gone. All right, I've got the computer name done. Now we'll see what else we have to do. That's my trio, it's not the other. Please re-enter. It didn't like my computer name. All right, I got put a name too long on it. So let me shorten it up. We're shortening it up. Let me back this up now a little bit, so you can see the Sony UX. It didn't like my computer name. Oh yeah, it is. It's thinking. It's disk thrashing. So it's building the initial network stuff is what it's doing. Which is probably pretty boring to be watching on a video podcast. Because we all know that the first time with Windows. Now it's checking my internet connectivity. Which will take forever. Actually it won't, but it's not going to be able to connect because... Obviously... I have an encrypted wireless network. Hmm. Let me see if it will let me input that at this time. No, it won't. We'll activate. Remind me to activate later. Activate later. Well, that mouse pointer is very sensitive. It's moving a lot. Congratulations, you are ready to go. Did you notice this is English? This is full English version of the OS. Maybe they knew it was coming to Interesting. No. Pretty cool. So now it's actually doing the settings. This is very easy to hold. There's actually a little thing here that I don't know what that's for. That you can't see right there that you can actually hold that with. That's pretty cool. That's a nice screen. So do you want Val Power Management? The following devices will be turned off. Oh, it's offering. The Val Power Management is excellent. It's one of the things I like best about the Sony U series because it gives the user complete and total control over the configuration of the power management. So what this is doing, it knows that the, the wireless, the Wi-Fi card is not being used because I haven't configured it with my encryption so it can get on. So it sensed that and it says, uh, you know, according to your settings now, we're going to power the network off. And I'm going to say no because I want to configure the Wi-Fi. But there we go. This is the default desktop that shows. And once again, everything is totally legible. Is it small? Yes, but it's very legible. Another interruption. Okay. While you were away, I successfully got all my network configured, uh, activated Windows, which is cool. So now, we're at a fully functional desktop. Let's try getting on the internet through Internet Explorer. 
Now there's definitely a bunch of junkware installed on this, and we're going to look at that here in a minute. And look at that. Default homepage it comes up with is dynamism. Now, isn't that clever? Those folks, they, they literally don't fail to think of anything. But of course, we're going to go to using the keyboard. And I can already tell you, while this keyboard will take some getting used to, having it here to do simple like entering URLs and passwords and stuff has saved a lot of trouble of otherwise having to go find and that's a familiar site to everybody in the free world we're up there oh we got a little dialog box the privacy icon okay don't ever show me this message again and look at that we have on the front page of 6700. Kevin's been active again, I can tell. Where is it? I'm still not sure what this middle button does over on this side, but we're going to play with it a little bit. Let's see what else. Oh, yes, let's look up on the JK on the Run website. That's my first grandchild. It's on the front page. This screen is actually remarkable. It is wonderful having 1024 in this direction because there's no scrolling and I can still see everything, even the little menus. But for those who can't, Sony, of course, has put the. That's the trio again. We'll be back in a moment. Life is always exciting in Mobile Gear Manor. Okay, we're back after all the interruptions, of course. I have the UX sitting in stock. It's actually charging now. I've hooked it up. DC in, light is on. And underneath, you see, in fact, if you pull that up, you can see the LED is flashing, saying it's charging, which is cool. Now I wanted to show, let's go ahead and pop it out of the dock, which is very easily done. I really do like this. I wonder what the purpose of this is. The, I know that this little ridge has a purpose. It almost looks like one of those infrared things, but it doesn't have infrared, so I'm not sure what that is. Now one thing that I neglected to show you on the side is the compact flash port. Now the Japanese version only has a nice compact flash slot, which is nice for putting in discs or uh, you know, other peripherals that run off the compact flash. The US version, instead of that, has the edge integrated capabilities from Singular, so that you can have it always connected via edge. I'm just looking at it, it's very nicely constructed and it fits the hands. I was very right when I saw the pictures and I think I wrote somewhere that it looked to me like this was perfect for fitting on the hands and that's very true the whole thing is far more comfortable than it's far more comfortable fitting in the hands than the Sony U71 which we're going to show let me back up a little bit I, I want you to see the size comparisons of the UX and the Sony U71, which I'm going to try to get up here without breaking. All right, it is much smaller than the Sony U. It is narrower, fall shorter. It's about the. It's actually a little bit shorter as well. I can get this there. So those of you familiar with the Sony U can appreciate how small this device really is. And yet it's a higher screen resolution. Here we have them stacked up. I've got the Sony U behind it, which you can see sticking out. Now this Sony U71 I have right here has got the extended battery on it. Okay, so if you try to compare the thicknesses, which is hard to do because this is curvy, it looks, 
it's a little bit thinner than the Sony U with the extended battery. So it's probably slightly thicker in the ridges on the back here than the Sony U with the standard battery. Let's do something now. I'm going to turn them both on so you can see both of the screens together. And then we're going to wrap this up. This is the unboxing video, but I promise you that very shortly I'm going to do a thorough video overview of the device. I'm going to show you every program it runs, uh, you know, to handle the video camera, which we played with a little bit during the last pause, I have to admit. And, uh, all of the other cool stuff. This is the Sony U71. It's actually got a 1.2 gigahertz, no, take that back, a 1.1 gigahertz CPU. It's resuming from, from hibernation. I'm booting the, the Sony. I actually shut it down uh, during one of the, the pauses. So it's actually booting now from scratch, and you see it's a lot faster, it's already up to the desktop, so the boot times aren't that bad. All right, what I'm going to do it's suggesting to turn off the network LAN again, which is the uh, wired Ethernet. So I'm going to go ahead and tell it, yeah, turn it off. Save battery, why not? My computer might be at risk. I don't have antivirus installed. I'll, I'll uh, remedy that shortly with putting Microsoft OneCare on it. It's up. It's fully functional. Now we've seen some mention on certain websites. We've done a video review of the UX. How much junk where there is. Now, as you can see there is some, but not nearly as much I think as any other machine I've ever seen, quite frankly. And a lot of it is not junkware. It's the camera capture utility, the power management, the software keyboard. There's actually a, a nice software keyboard that uh, Sony has put on here in case you don't want to use the thumbboard. It puts you a nice little on-screen keyboard that you can tap. Looks very standardish, QWERTY keyboard. There are some programs I don't uh, that that you wish they wouldn't put on the junkware like Real Player, the Connect Store. It's got Power DVD on it. Keyboard Troubleshooter. That's interesting. It's a PDF. Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Reader and the QuickTime Player. Looks like it's all there and running is the keyboard. Windows updates are ready to install? I don't think so, not right now. I'm just flipping through it. Okay. So we've got, I want to get the other, I want to get the UX at the desktop. As you can see, the U71 has got a really nice desktop wallpaper. So here we are with both the screens and the size. And what I'm going to do very quickly, I think, is I'm going to get the browser up on both devices so you can compare the two screen resolutions. They're both very bright, vivid, typical Sony screens. They're both, right now I can tell you they're both marvelous to look at. Now this has a screen protector on it, so it's a little glossy. Um, this one is glossy without a screen protector, so it's that X bright screen which we have seen before. And so I'm gonna, I just want to, before we go, I want to show you the two screens running the JK on the Run whoops, website. So I can get them running on both machines at once, which I'm trying to do now. I've got in this geek, in this geek heaven. And I'm going to do that, and I'm going to try to find JK on the run, which I was up before. It comes up really fast. I'm going to drop the other one, do I? 
Now to be fair, I've got a lot of IE toolbars on my U71, which I don't need. So, oh, I know what, let's go to full screen mode on both of them. So we have a very similar one to compare. Put the uh, stylus mm -hmm. down. So what we have here is JK on the run, both resolutions. You see how much more you see on the Sony UX, and you can really see it. And that's how it compares. This is 800 by 600 resolution. This is 1024 by 600 on an even smaller screen. Now what I want to show you briefly before we go is we're going to look at the zoom function. You just keep pressing it. Now it's up to two two times zoom, and you pan with the cursor. You hmm. see how you, everything's perfect? I mean, it's actually perfectly blown up and zoomed, so you can see it really nicely. And now, how you t return? Let's see how high it goes. That's three times. That's it. Yeah, three times is the limit. So let's go back to normal size. Look how immediate that is and how quickly that happens. Can you go less than one time? No, I don't think so. So, beautiful bright screen. We've got the fingerprint reader, which I'll configure for the next video so we can see how well that works for logging in. The motion eye, well, I tell you what, we can't just quit, you know, we're, we're just total geeks. Oh, I don't want to enroll the fingerprint reader. Now, that's slick. It, as soon as I touch the fingerprint reader, it said you need to set it up without doing anything else. That's awesome. Um, let me get out of full screen mode in IE simply because I can't deal with it. I wanted to show you real quick here the camera, which was awesome. The capture button, if you just hit the capture button, it fires up the uh, camera capture utility, which does both video and stills, I mean movie and stills. We're looking at, now we see the mystery <laughs> person that we've heard throughout this whole video. That's Gabriel right there, which you can't really see. Now you can see him. So we're recording a video of a video recorder. So it's going to go in on forever when you blow these up, kind of like that mirror effect. So right now, we're going to tell it to do a movie. So it is going to fire up. This is perfect for teleconferencing, and I'm going to show this with Skype in a, in a future video. There's Gabriel. There's me. There's me squishing Gabriel's head. No, he dropped out of the way. So anyway, that's the from the Motion Eye camera on the front here. Perfect, like I said, for Skype video conferencing, which we're going to do some of in a future video. Do we want to exit the software? Yes, we do. See ya. See ya. So, this is the Sony UX50 Micro PC the latest micro PC from the Sony Battle line be coming back very soon with a complete and thorough video review of this device and of course I'll be writing a bunch of stuff about it on JK on the Run as well so this has been JK on the Run audio edition show number I think 19 or 20 I'll have to check on that 20 and hope you enjoyed the Unboxing ceremony for the Sony UX50 Micro PC. Thanks to Dynamism for supplying the review unit. You can find them at www.dynamism.com. And I'll get the link in the show notes. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you really, really soon. See ya!